Hello and thank you for joining me today. I'm Jan Clothier of Thinking Stamping and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator based in New Zealand. And today I'm going to share with you how I made this card for the latest challenge at Colour Inspiration where I'm a design team member. And the colours that we had to work with this week were an unusual little mix, um, Orchid Oasis, Balmy Blue, Polished Pink, and evening evergreen and although initially I was tempted with the idea of going with florals I decided that I'd go nautical instead because I am having a little love affair with this sea turtle set from the 2023 20, January to April mini catalogue um, it's a photopolymer set it's a reversible but we're not going to be using the reversibles today and it does use a technique of mine that's a favorite of mine and I'm sure you have them too a technique that you kind of like always go back to and for me, it's faux torn paper. Um, I, I love to use that technique, and I've done a lot of cards with it. Um, so I'm going to share with you today how I did it. So we'll start off with what do we need? Well, I've done my card base in Orchid Oasis. Whoops. Uh, as always, it is half of an A4 piece of paper. So it's 21 centimetres that way, 14.8 that way, and I've scored it at um, 10.5, which is halfway. So we'll give that a little fold, and we'll just pop it aside because we don't need it yet. I've got a piece of basic white, which is half a centimetre smaller. Sorry, that's the wrong piece. This is the piece which is half a centimetre smaller. So that is for the inside of my card. So I'm going to pop that away for now. I've got a piece of Evening Evergreen, which is 14.3 by 10. And that's for the mat. And then I've got a piece of Basic White, which is half a centimetre smaller again. So it is 9.5 by 13.8, and that's the piece that we're going to be doing all the work with. So we'll pop the other things aside. The other thing you need is a little piece of white because I have stamped and cut, fussy cut already, the smallest turtle. Now the, um, the cover images are smaller than the real life, so that's what it looks like on the cover. That's how big it is in real life. So I've just stamped it in Evening Evergreen onto basic white and fussy cut him and later on he's going to go on to uh, my little underwater scene. So uh, over the years I've done different ways, I've used different ways of um, making, creating my mask. Uh, usually I just use photocopier paper and then I stick it down with um, post-it notes. However, Stamping Up has this lovely new masking paper which comes in uh, 12 sheets, you get 12 sheets of it, it comes split down the middle like that, so you, so you can peel off the two halves, so what I've done is I've taken half of one of those, and I'm going to use that, and I'm going to tear it, so you just start with a random kind of tear, you want a bit of um, shape on it, so you don't want the, sh the tear to be completely straight, so just tease it apart, doesn't matter if it's too long, it's actually it's better if it's a bit long, because then you can move the two halves apart and stop it being completely symmetrical. So I'm going to peel off, hopefully this is going to peel off easily for me. Uh, yep. Now one thing I did discover though, is that while the masking paper is absolutely amazing for masking stamps, when you've got it in a big area like this, it is actually really sticky. So before I attach it, what I'm going to do is I'm just, you can't see me, but what I'm doing off camera is I am just sticking it to my clothes and lifting it off again so that it loses some of its sticky because I don't want to go to all the trouble of doing this masking. And then no matter how carefully you take off the paper, uh, have it... Um, you can see it's got little bits of fluff on it from where I've lifted it on and off my dress. So we'll just do the other half of that. Okay, so now it's just a matter of whereabouts do I want this scene to be. So I think we'll go about there. And then I'm going to come in with the other top. And you see, if I, I've now got the luxury of moving it around a bit so it's not completely symmetrical. So how wide do I want it to be? Oh, I'd like it to be about that wide, I think. And I've just I've just used a piece of photocopying paper so that I've, I don't mess up my um, my nice grid paper. 
And because I'm ultra careful, or uh, perhaps ultra fussy, I am going to put a post-it note over there just to remove any possibility of getting um, my ink in the wrong place. Okay, so now we're all set up for our masking. So we need some blending brushes. Now, I just keep a, a, a one blending brush for each colour. Uh, I am probably going to have to revisit that. I have previously um, rubbed it off onto a microfiber cloth, so I'm hoping I'm not going to pick up too much of any wrong colour. So for that reason, I'm starting with the balmy blue. And I'm just going to circle my way onto the gap. And I'm sure you know the rules about um, trying to get a good finish with your blending. So tap, tap it off, circle your way from the scrap onto your area that you want to cover. Uh, to be fair, you don't actually want the sponging to be mirror smooth because you do want the sense that this is under the ocean. So you want some darker patches and some lighter patches. Um, so that it looks perhaps a bit more realistic, a bit more ocean-like. Because, you know, the ocean is not smooth as glass most of the time. So, some light. Tap it off. Circle on. Okay, and then when you've got enough of that, which is the balmy blue, I'm going to come in with the Orchid Oasis. Now I've done it this way because I feel like the ocean is deeper, is darker in the depths than it is in the shallows. So I've done the lightest colour on the top and I'm going to come in with my darker colour at the bottom. Now this is a pretty juicy ink pad so I'm being a little bit fussier about tapping off on this case. But see I'm not bothered by that little ink spot because firstly it's going to be covered by other Stamping, and secondly, I want it to look perhaps not completely perfectly smooth. Okay, and you can build this colour up as deep or as shallow as you want it to be. Okay, so that's that. And then once you've done the background, then you can start the fun bit, which is adding in stuff. So I'm going to start with this little shoal of fish. And where have I popped my shoal of fish? The shoal of fish have gone AWOL. Oh, here they are, already blocked up. So polished pink for the fish. Pink it up and tap, tap, tap. And then I'm just going to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Because I like a good ink transfer. And I think we'll have some more. And a few more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. So there is our fish. Now, there's lots of things I could put in the scene. I could have gone for starfish, but I'm definitely going for seaweed and I'm going for evening evergreen with that. Um, this stamp here is the, I think it's the seaweed. It is reversible, but I'm only going to use, I'm not going to use the reversible side today. But I am going to stamp it from that way and that way, just so I get some variation. So again, tap on, tap, tap, tap. And then a nice firm pressure and a count to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yes, that's what I want to see. You see, now I'm just going to go, go random. Gonna go that way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you can do this, you know, you can put in as many or as few as you want. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And maybe we'll just have one more going there. One, two, three. And perhaps, oops, well, nice thing, it's a see-through stamp, so we'll do that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Ten. Now, I'm getting a little bit of muckiness on my stamp, so just on my blocks, I just give it a wipe up. And maybe we'll just have one more. 
Uh, nice thing about this, of course, is if I decide later I want to put some more in, I can. Okay, but for now, that's our evening evergreen. Now, I think we will have some little sea urchins and we'll use Orchid Oasis for that. So, this is a pretty solid stamp, so you want to make sure you've got ink and then a nice firm pressure. I think we'll have one over here. Beautiful. Now, this is the moment of truth. This is the moment where you take the mask off. Post it notes to the rescue. Now, taking the mask masking paper off, I think you have better success. If you kind of pull it at a 45 degree angle and you see that's actually coming off nice and easily and that is due to the fact that there's quite a lot of my dress lint on the on the back of that one let's hope it goes as well down here okay ooh, ooh, it's a little bit firmer okay but pulling at a kind of 45 degree angle and just slow and gentle and careful uh, is what we're aiming for. Forty five degrees just seems to help it peel gently. What you don't want to do is rip this off with a great flourish because if you do you will almost certainly lift some of the top of the paper off okay so there's our little underwater scene that's turned out really nicely now i have um stamped my sentiment directly on now you'll notice the sea turtles doesn't have any sentiments so i've got out my new go-to from the mini catalog the january to april 2023 mini catalog something fancy and I've just chosen this simple happy birthday from it. And what I'm going to do is now see whether I can stamp straight when the world or video watchers are watching. So I'm going to get my Orchid Oasis. Now what I've done is I've tried to block up, I've used the grid paper and I've tried to block the stamp so that the words are parallel with the bottom of the stamp block. Now in theory, if I then line up the bottom of the block and make it parallel with the edge of the paper my stamp will be straight now most of the time that works there are times when it doesn't and in that turned out to be one of the times when it did work now I did have a plan B if I'd stamped that and it had been wonky I had already stamped the same stamp and used the matching die so that if that had gone wrong, my plan B would have been to have used a label and some sentiment. We haven't had to go that far. Right, so now it is simply a matter of putting things together. So, we are going to attach our little scene. Oops. Our little scene to our evening evergreen mat. Just a third of brew. I like glue because I like wiggle room. Uh, if you are a person who likes tape or tape runner or snail or whatever, then that's what you should use. I like it because now I've got a moment or two where I can go, is that straight? And the glue will let me glide it if I have got it out of kilter. Okay, then I'm going to attach that to my Orchid Oasis card base. Same thing, I've got some wiggle room. Now, the finishing touches are, I am going to add my sea turtle in, but before I do, I am going to give him a little bit of shadowing with some 
evening evergreen and the reason I'm going to do that it's two twofold first of all uh, it helps to hide the cut edges it just takes the roughness off of the cut edge and secondly it just leaves a little bit of ink around the edge of the shape which creates a shadowing which gives it just a little bit of depth you know it, lo it looks like it's never going to be a 3d item obviously but with the shading it just looks a little bit more 3d than if it's completely completely um, all white and I just like that and of course if you wanted to you could add in a different color using a blending brush as well but I like him just evening evergreen so he's going to stay like that now it's up to you where you put him uh like I've got a little slight little blob there I could put him there if I wanted to but actually I don't care that much about the blob I'm simply going to place him swimming into the ocean I'm going to use this flipper to cover over that tiny little bit where the ink was not perhaps as thick as it could have been so a couple of dimensionals just to pop them up I could and you know me, uh, you know that I do hate things sagging and I do overuse dimensionals. It's just how I like things. But I am actually not going to bother putting minis on there. I'm just going to stick with the two. Okay, so he's going to go there like that. Now that could be all done, but I think I'm going to add in some rhinestones just for a little bit of sparkle. Uh, it's entirely optional. You don't have to. And of course the other thing you could add in there if you wanted would have been some of the um, matte in colour dots. But I'm going for a little bit of sparkle, so I'm going to put one there. And a little one there. And maybe I'll pop another one there so it's a bit like a bubble. I don't actually know where the turtles blow bubbles. But... And then the, the eye, the turtles kind of leading into uh, the happy birthday. So, the only other thing is the inside, which I'm not going to do now, but I'll show you what I did on the inside of this one. Um, I simply stamped some seaweed, some of the fish, and then I used the blending brush to add in a little bit of balmy blue in behind, just to sort of carry the um, front into the inside. So, there you have it. Um, it is using the seed, the faux form the faux torn paper technique with the sea turtle set. Now, if you have seen anything that you like in this video and you live in New Zealand, you're more than welcome to shop with me. There's a link to my online store in the video description below and in the end cards that's about to pop up. There's a link, there's information about my blog and my Facebook page and you can contact me there. I'm also more than happy to answer any questions that anyone has. Uh, and if you've liked what you've seen, don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss anything new that I do. Thank you very much for watching and happy stamping.